Good day, my name is John Weber. I'm the team lead here at Software Toolbox. Thank you for attending today's virtual training. Our primary instructor today is Kevin Rutherford. Uh, Kevin has been doing this type of work for the last 14 years, has traveled all over the world and, and done this type of training. And of course, now we are having to do everything in the virtual world. I also have another one of our virtual instructors, Mark Holbach, here with us today. Mark is the technical team lead. You may have attended a couple of Mark's other sessions that he's been doing done over the last few months. Mark's going to be one of the key panelists for Q&A today, answering your questions. So with that, uh, Mark and I are going to turn off our video and mute ourselves and turn things over to Kevin. Okay, thanks, John. And uh, again, thank you all for, for joining us today uh, for some training on how to, how to integrate non-standard devices without requiring custom developed code. Uh, the goal in today's training is to show you some examples of how to easily connect devices that don't have an off-the-shelf driver like a Modbus, for instance, uh, and get them integrated with your control systems such as HMIs, SCADAs, MES, historians, and others. Uh, so it's not going to be a death by PowerPoint. Uh, probably 95% of my training today is going to be is going to be live on my desktop. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what I'm going to cover today. Uh, Gonna, we're going to go a little bit into what is what do I mean by a non-standard device? Because uh, you may not have heard that term before. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background on what we mean when we say non-standard device. Um, as I said, uh, we'll be doing a live training. Uh, I'm going to be re reviewing some device manuals um, for our example devices of non-standard devices today, um, our Omni server product, which we're going to be using to connect to those. I'm going to be configuring it for the devices, uh, the protocols for both of those devices, um, uh, configuring the topics that we need to connect to, um, doing a confirmation that we're successfully communicating. And we're going to be using one of our solutions called Cogent Data Hub to set up a point-to-point -point bridge between those two devices. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to be showing you a successful um, scan of a barcode that then gets printed automatically uh, on my printer. Uh, and then we'll cover, uh, I'll give you a, a preview into some upcoming training opportunities that you might want to take advantage of. Uh, and uh, we'll close with some discussion and, and Q&A. So, Connecting the rest of your devices, your zoo uh, of automation devices, if you will. Uh, so you've got OPC, UA, DA clients out there, might even still have some DDE type client applications, uh, Wonderware applications, and you've got a bunch of different what we call non-standard devices out there um, in, in your, in your um, automation networks. Uh, that you don't know how to connect. They don't have an off-the-shelf driver like a Modbus or something like that to connect to. So things like linear scales, uh, barcode scanner, which I'm going to show you shortly, uh, barcode printer, which I'm going to show you shortly, um, connectivity to message displays and or scoreboards, measuring systems, gas analyzers, way bridges, um, gas chromatographs, um, connectivity to RFID systems, intercom systems, all, all sorts of those non-standard devices that are out there that you're probably not actually connected to and collecting data, but they have data that could be useful to you for use in your control system. So enter OmniServer, uh, which is a user configurable OPC, DDE, and SuiteLink server. Um, it has interfaces for connectivity uh, via OPC UA, OPC DA, um, DDE, if you still have applications out there that need to connect via DDE, uh, and it has a native Wonderware Aviva SuiteLink interface that doesn't require FS Gateway or OI Gateway to get connected. Um, as far as hardware connectivity, uh, OmniServer supports serial and Ethernet connectivity. Now, serial connectivity also includes USB devices that are mapped to a virtual COM port. Um, and uh, for Ethernet, we also support connectivity to serial device servers, where your actual end device is a serial device, but it's connected to an Ethernet to serial converter. We can connect to that converter and communicate with your devices. Uh, operating system support, we keep OmniServer current for operating system support, including 32 and 64-bit, uh, from Windows 7 all the way up through current uh, server 2019. Um, and we stay on top of that. As a new operating system is released, uh, we get it in the queue to make sure that we're supported in the latest technology uh, for when you're ready to migrate to that new technology. Uh, that also includes virtualization platforms. Uh, OmniServer supported 
uh, on uh, VMware, Virtual PC, and Hyper-V for virtualization, which is more and more common uh, in the uh, industrial automation space. Um, as far as the types of protocols that OmniServer can use to communicate, uh, OmniServer is typically going to be is going to work with devices that have protocols that are either a variable length uh, with some form of delimiter at the end of the fields, or if it's a fixed length where we know um, how long the fields and the overall message is going to be. So. And uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, uh, bore you any more with slides. I want to jump right into the live training. Uh, the integration examples I'm going to show you in this live training include connecting to a barcode scanner using OmniServer. Then I'm going to and then I'm going to set up connectivity to a label printer using OmniServer. And I'm going to set up an automatic point-to-point -point bridge between my scanner and my printer uh, using the Cogent Data Hub. So just escape out of my um, out of my PowerPoint here, and let me bring up, I'm going to bring up my, first thing I want to do is show you the protocol documentation for each of these devices. So I'm, all, and I also have a video set up for my actual devices so that I can show you what I'm doing when I'm actually scanning and printing. So I'm going to stop my video so that I can show you my video setup. So you can see I've got a I've got a video window here. Uh, I've got my barcode printer, uh, my Zebra TLP 2824, right here. You can see, and I have my scanner, my my DataLogic QD 2100 scanner, and a couple of various products from my pantry that I'm going to be using as example uh, UPCs to scan as part of this training. So I'm just going to minimize that for now until we need it, and I'm going to bring up my documentation. So I have the user manual for my DataLogic QD2100 scanner here. And um, as far as what I'm looking for in this documentation, uh, the first piece of information I'm looking for uh, is how to actually physically connect to my scanner. So, and I've done some bookmarking uh, of the documentation um, so that I can jump right to the relevant sections for the purposes of time. Um, so I'm going to go to, uh, within this documentation, uh, this scanner is a USB device by default. You'll remember I mentioned that we can map, uh, if, a, if a USB device is mapped to a virtual COM port, OmniServer is going to be able to connect to that device as if it were uh, an actual physical COM port. So this particular device supports that. And the first thing I had to do when I connected up my, my DataLogic scanner was find this barcode for RS-232 for use, or, or a, a select USB COM standard, so that it emulates an RS-232 device, and I scanned that with my scanner, and then it was then set up to emulate uh, a virtual COM port. Um, so the other, the other piece of information for physically connecting that I need are the default COM parameters that I'm going to use. Uh, to connect to the scanner. So I'm going to go to my default serial parameters. As you can see, um, it shows me in the appendix that the serial parameters uh, that the scanner defaults to are 9600 for the baud rate, uh, eight data bits, one stop bit, no parity, and no handshaking control. So that's information that I'm going to need to use when I configure my COM port in OmniServer later. Uh, so the, the, the last information that I need for my documentation is the actual format of the data string that that scanner is going to send to the host, which is in this case OmniServer. So if I go to the data editing section in this documentation. I'm just going to zoom in on that so it's easier for you guys to see. Uh, the breakdown of, of a message string from this DataLogic print, uh, scanner, um, it can have a prefix character, a label ID, an AIM ID, the actual barcode data, which is the which is the data that we want to use for printing a barcode label. Um, you can have an optional label ID and then a suffix, which you might also know as a termination character, at the end of that string to tell OmniServer that that's the end of the string and that it's received all the data that that it should be expecting to receive. Uh, now those, that now that doesn't tell us what this scanner defaults to. That just tells us what's possible. Um, so if I actually go a little further down and see the defaults, it tells me that there are no global prefixes or any of those other fields, and that the actual global suffix or termination character is a, a hexadecimal 0D, or what's commonly referred to as a carriage return. Uh, so that's information we're going to need when we configure our protocol in OmniServer shortly. 
So that gives me all the information I need for connecting to and configuring a protocol for the barcode scanner. So next, let's switch over to the documentation for the actual printer. Now, with the printer, there's actually two different documents that I'm interested in. There's the user guide for the Zebra TLP2824, and I'm going to use this document to figure out my serial COM parameters. Uh, this particular device, or at least the model that I have, is a native serial uh, device that's connected to an RS-232 DB9 serial port, COM port on my computer. So I need the COM parameters, same as with the barcode scanner, so that I can set up my COM device in OmniServer. So in the, in the user document, I find the default serial parameters are 9600 baud, no parity, eight data bits, and one stop bit. So I have that information. Now, the other information I need are the actual commands that need to be sent to the printer. Uh, now, the printer protocol is slightly more complex than a barcode scanner. Uh, we're going to be using about three different commands in order to send the the print operation to the printer. Uh, so I am going to be using a pre-configured protocol, but I want to show you the information from this document that was necessary and was used to create that protocol. So I have the programming guide for the Eltron programming language from Zebra, and that's why it's called the EPL uh, protocol. So I want to look at the basic command syntax, including the termination character. So if I go down into my bookmark here, let me zoom in so that's a little easier to see. Here's a basic command syntax for the EPL language. Um, all of the commands are going to start with a command uh, command character. So in this case, in this example, it's a capital A. And uh, depending on what that command, specific command is, there may be a list of parameters included with that. Um, and each of the parameters will come right after the command character, and they're separated with a comma. And uh, if it and if it has a data a data section uh, of data that you want to be sent, like for our or for our case, we're going to be sending a barcode value that we want to be printed. That particular information will be enclosed in quotation marks. And now this doesn't tell us anything about any sort of termination characters at the end. So if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see I've highlighted each command line must be terminated with a line feed character, which is decimal ten or hexadecimal zero a. So if I scroll back up, that means at the very end of this, after the last quotation mark, there would be a line feed at the end of that, and every command is going to have that. So that's the basic syntax. Um, like I said, we're going to be using three different commands from this protocol. I'll go to the first one. The first command we need to send is a clear image buffer command, and that's going to be the command character is going to be a capital N, and there are no parameters for this format, so it'll just be terminated with a line feed. Uh, the next command that we need to send after that is the actual barcode barcode command, uh, which loads up the printer's buffer with the information for how to print our barcode on the label. Uh, so that one starts with a capital B, and then it has a set of eight parameters separated by, by commas, and then it has the actual data field of the data we want to print, which is going to be the barcode. Um, inside uh, quotation marks, and then a line feed will be at the end of that. Um, and the types of parameters this particular command requires is going to define the horizontal and the vertical start position, as you can see, um, whether it's rotated or not, uh, what type of barcode, which we're going to be we're going to be scanning and printing UPC barcodes, um, how wide the narrow bars are in the in the barcode, uh, how how wide the wide bars are in the barcode the actual height of the barcode when it's printed, uh, and whether or not to include the actual numbers uh, of that barcode. Um, and then there's the data field, which will be our barcode. Um, so after that, that, that actually just loads up the buffer. That doesn't actually send the command that makes the printer print the label. Uh, so the third command is the print command. Um, so that's a capital P followed by two parameters separated by a comma, uh, the parameters being uh, how many label sets to print, and the second parameter being how many copies of those label sets to print. And then, of course, that's terminated by a line feed. Um, so that's all the information we need from the protocol documentation for both devices. So I'm going to minimize that. Um, and since both of those are COM ports, I just want to show you how I can confirm which COM ports I need to connect to. So I'm going to bring up my device manager. And I just click there. That'll bring up my device manager. And I want to go down to the ports, COM, and LPT section. And my barcode scanner, since it's a virtual COM port, it actually displays as barcode scanner. And the COM port I want to connect to is COM3. 
and my printer is connected to the physical COM port COM5. So those are the two, two COM ports I want to connect to. So all that being said, I can now switch over to my Omni server and start configuring things. So I'm going to bring up my Omni server configuration. And the first thing I'm going to do is configure my COM ports. So in the devices section, I'm going to right click, go to new serial USB map device, which is, which is the equivalent of my COM ports. Um, and you see it defaulted to COM3 because I already have COM1 and COM2 configured by default. Now, I made some notes of the COM parameters that we saw in the documentation. So the baud rate was supposed to be 9600, eight data bits, no parity, and one stop bit. So you'll see that actually the defaults in OmniServer match up to those. So all we have to do now is click Save. And I'm going to add my COM5 for my printer. So I'm going to go do another new serial USB map device. I'm going to change that one to COM5. Again, I made notes of the, of the COM parameters. 9600 baud, eight data bits, no parity, and one stop bit. Again, the defaults of the device match the defaults of OmniServer. Now that's by design. Um, those particular COM parameters are, are pretty commonly used as default serial parameters for serial devices. So us having those as our defaults in OmniServer just makes your process of setting things up uh, a little bit easier for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. <laughs> So we're finished configuring our devices. The next thing we need in OmniServer are our protocols. So I'm going to go to my protocol section in the tree view. And for the data logic barcode scanner, I am going to configure that protocol from scratch. So I'm going to get a new protocol. And you'll see my protocol, uh, my visual protocol editor opens up here. I'm just going to give this a user friendly name. I'm going to call this DL scanner as my protocol name. Now, the first thing I want to do is define an item which is actually going to correspond to the barcode that I receive from the scanner. So I'm going to click plus to add a new item. And I'm going to call my item scanned code. And I want that to be a data type of string. So I have my item. The next thing I need to do is go to my response only messages and I'm going to define a new response only message. Now response only messages are what we've previously in the past called unsolicited messages. It's a type of message where um, we're not having to send a command to the device to get it to send us back the data that we need. So we're literally going to sit there and wait for the scanner to send us the string that we're waiting for and compare it to what we define here. So I'm going to call my I'm going to call my response only message scanned code. And if I click down to expand things, I have my received field, um, which is the only which is the only particular message field that I'm interested in for this particular protocol, because our scanner doesn't expect a response back from us when it sends us its string. Uh, as you'll remember from the manual, um, all, we're get, all we're expecting from the printer or from the scanner um, is the actual barcode value and then it's going to be terminated by a character term. So you'll see I have, some, I have some modules to the left and the right of my message fields. I have one for items. So I can actually drag and drop that item that I just configured to my received field and see it puts it in the right sequence. That's the first thing we're going to expect. And then I need to terminate that with a character term control sequence. So if I go to my control sequences module, I could scroll down and find it. These are in alphabetical order. If I want to filter things and make my life a little easier, I can start typing. And you'll see it brings up my carriage return. So I can just drag that right over to the end. And you'll see we have other modules for other more advanced uh, components that you can use in an OmniServer protocol that are beyond the scope of today's training. Uh, but those also support drag and drop, including error detection codes. But at this point, our data logic scanner protocol is completely configured and ready to go. So I'm going to go to File, Save, and click Yes to apply the changes I've just made. So I'm going to go ahead and close this protocol. Now, the next protocol we're concerned with is the printer, being able to print to our Zebra printer. So as I mentioned, since that one's a little more complex, we're just going to review my existing sample protocol, Zebra Barcode EPL2. So I'm going to double click on that in my protocol list, to open that up in the Visual Protocol Editor. And um, so the first thing I want to do in here is review my list of items. So you'll see there are quite a few more items for this particular protocol. Um, I have items that correspond to each of those parameters that you saw in the commands and the documentation. My item for, for, for the actual barcode value that I want to send to print on the printer. And then I have an item for each of the parameters in my print command. 
that defines the number of label sets and the number of copies. Now you'll also see that I have initial values defined for each of those parameters. Uh, now what this allows me to do, if those values for those parameters are always going to be the same, I can just define an initial value and then I don't actually have to set that value every time. However, having these as items instead of hard coding those values in my protocol message gives me the flexibility to, from a client application, if I ever need to change any of those parameters, I can actually just write to that item and easily change that on the fly. Uh, so these are all of our items that are defined. Let's go take a look at our command response messages. Now, the difference, uh, the difference between a command response message and a response only is that with a command response, we're actually sending a command to a device, and we may or may not get a response back. It's perfectly okay to define our command response message with just a command. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the first command that we're going to be sending is the buffer clear. So if I expand that down, you can see I have a line feed, my capital N control char or, uh, command character, and then the termination character of the line feed. Um, if I were building that, I would have been able to type in the N, and over here I can actually add line feeds from my module, just like we did with the carriage return. Um, since, I've, since this is already built, we don't need to do that. Uh, so this command is good to go. Now, the way I have this protocol set up, um, the only thing we're going to have to do to trigger an actual print is write the actual barcode value that we want to be printed to the data underscore barcode item that, that is configured, because that's set up as the trigger for this particular message. I'm also using on success chaining in OmniServer so that as soon as, as soon as that is triggered and this command completes successfully, it's going to trigger the next command that we need to send, which is the write buffer barcode command. So we'll go to that one next. And you'll see in here, we have our capital B as our command, our command character. And then we have each of those parameters defined uh, as their items. Um, so like I said earlier, if those values are never going to change, they always need to be the same, I could replace these item references just with the actual hard-coded values. Uh, but having these items defined with initial values gives us more flexibility. And you'll see those are separated by the commas, as I said they would be. And then we have inside of quotation marks our data underscore barcode item. So it's going to take the value of that item, and it's going to include it as part of this information that gets sent to the print buffer, and then our termination of the line feed. So you see this one's set up. Uh, once this completes successfully, it's going to trigger the next command, which is the print command. So the print buffer is our command response message. So let's go have a look at that one. Print underscore buffer. You'll see that one's set up with our command character of a capital P, uh, and then our first parameter, our second parameter, separated by a comma and uh, then the line feed that all of those are terminated with. So this, this protocol is good to go. It's pre-configured, so we're going to go ahead and close out of this protocol. And the next thing that we're interested in doing and we have to do is configure our topics, which are going to be used by the client application. Uh, so either your HMI, SCADA, Historian, MES, or in our particular case, our Cogent Data Hub, to actually access each of those devices. So if I go back to my OmniServer configuration, go to the Topics section. I'm going to configure a topic for each of my devices. So I'm going to do New, Topic, and I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to call the topic for my scanner, simply Scanner. And for this topic, I need to associate this topic with the protocol that we just configured, so DL scanner, and my device, which is COM3. And that's it for the topic configuration. I'm going to click Save. And I need to add an additional topic for my printer. So for simplicity, I'm just going to call that one printer. And I'm going to use that sample protocol that I already had configured that we just reviewed. And the device is going to be COM5. Click Save. So we're all set in OmniServer. We have our top, we have our topics, protocols, and our devices configured. So the next thing we can do is jump over to Cogent Data Hub. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the client section. And since we're going to be connecting to OmniServer via OPC UA, I'm just going to show you where I'm getting the information on how to make that connection. So if I open the OPC UA section in OmniServer. You'll see the endpoint that I'm going to be connecting to from Data Hub is opc.tcp colon slash slash and my local computer name, which is swtb-lt-028 colon and then the, the port number that it's going to be connecting to, which is 27730. 
So that's all information that I'm going to be using momentarily in the data. Oh, so I'm going to cancel out of that. Now, the other thing I want to do to use as part of my testing where I confirm that I'm actually communicating with these devices is the I.O. monitor in OmniServer. And that allows me to select a specific port and see any data that's being received on it or sent from it. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. And I am going to go ahead and bring my device configuration up and just kind of have it down in the corner here. And then I'm going to jump over to my data hub. Here's the Cogent data hub. As I indicated, the first thing I want to do here is configure an OPC UA client connection to my Omni server. So you'll see it's set up to act as an OPC UA client to these servers. So I'm just going to add a new server. And my connection name, I'm just going to call that OmniServer. UA. And I'm going to change this to my local machine. And I'm going to enter that endpoint that we saw earlier, which is opc.tcp colon slash slash stwtb dash lt dash 028 colon and my port number 27730. Now since I'm on a local I'm on my local machine and I'm behind a firewall, I'm going to leave my security policy as none and I'm going to connect anonymously instead of use, using a user and password authentication for the purposes of this particular training. Uh, now the next thing I need to do is I'm going to define a data domain which is in Om and, and data hub that's that's where the particular items or nodes from our OPC UA server are going to be located for access. And that those are going to be accessed by our point-to-point -point bridge when I set that up shortly. And I'm going to load all of my node or nodes or items from OmniServer for this particular connection. So I'm going to click OK. Now in Data Hub, you always want to click the apply button to make sure your changes have gotten applied to the actual runtime. So I'm going to click apply. And you'll see that my connection to OmniServer is now running. So I'm going to do a quick test using the view data option in data hub and that allows me to see all of my data now all of my data is in is i forgot to define an actual specific data domain in that so it's using the default data domain uh, so all of my omni server data is in the default data domain you'll see here swb toolbox dot omni server and you'll see there's my printer topic and there's my scanner topic so the first thing i want to do and I'm going to bring up my IO monitor so that you can see this, is I'm actually going to go over here and I'm going to scan one of my barcodes so that we can see that value change. And you'll see over here in my data hub that I received that value from OmniServer for the barcode that I just scanned. So we know we're connected to OmniServer. We know that OmniServer is successfully connected to and receiving barcode data from our scanner. Uh, the last test I want to do, and down on OmniServer, I'm going to change this to COM5 so we can see what's going out to our printer, uh, is I'm going to go to the data underscore barcode item, and I'm going to manually force a barcode value to be sent. So I'm going to take another one of my items here, and I'm going to manually type in the barcode UPC value, 696001043. If I hit Enter, You'll see OmniServer sent out the string of commands, the clear buffer, then it sent out the barcode uh, information to the buffer in the printer, and then it sent the actual print command with my parameters, and all those are terminated by a hexadecimal 0A or line fee. So that confirms that we're connected by, uh, that OmniServer is connected to both our barcode scanner and our printer. Uh, and that Data Hub is successfully connected to OmniServer for both of those topics. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the view there. And then the last step of this is to configure my point-to-point -point bridge in Data Hub. So I'm going to go to the bridging section, and you'll see enable point-to-point -point bridging is checked. And I'm just going to configure a bridge. So you'll see in my Data Hub that I have to define a source, which is where the value for the bridge is coming from, and a destination, which is the point where the value is going to be written to. So for both of those, the data domain is going to be default and OmniServer, and if I go to my scanner, which is where the value is coming from that I want to be printed, I select my scanned code item. You'll see that populated the field for the source, and I'll expand default, OmniServer, and I'll go to my printer, 
and I want the target of that value to be written to the data underscore barcode item to cause that, that scanned barcode from the barcode scanner to be printed automatically. Uh, now, the last piece of the bridge is you'll see the direction over here. It defaults to forward only, which takes a value from the source item and writes it to the destination item. Uh, now, if Data Hub does support uh, inverse bridging as well, um, that would be a situation where uh, you would expect a data value to come back from the device and it would need to go the other direction. Uh, to the other device. Now, in our case, we don't expect any values to come back from the printer and need to be written to the barcode scanner. So we're going to keep this at the default of forward only. If I click apply, you'll see that gets added. And you'll notice in the background over here, um, the printer automatically printed that, that scanned value from earlier uh, where I scanned from the barcode. Um, since that didn't get written previously, it was kept in DataUp's buffer and it got automatically pushed over once we set up this bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to minimize my data hub, and you'll see over there. There's the second. There's the print of that. There's the print commands for what the print that just occurred. Uh, so just to set things up here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you how this is working. Let me select my COM3 for my barcode scanner, and uh, I'm going to turn these products around. I've got some dish soap here that I'm going to ch check as well. I'm just going to scan that. You should see over here in the live feed. So I scan that. And the printer just automatically printed that. It printed this, this barcode that we received. And if I switch this back to COM5 and do another one, I'll scan my oatmeal. <laughs> Took that, and it just automatically printed that by sending that command. So just to give you a little bit of a closer look, I'm going to maximize that. And I'm just going to start scanning some scanning these back and forth to show you that this is an automated process at this point, now that Data Hub has that point-to-point -point bridge configured. And it's almost instantaneous. There's a slight amount of lag. Um, now, I will apologize. You'll notice on my printer there's a little bit of um, offsetting here. Um, there, is a, there is an issue with my actual printer device and the sensor that it uses to detect the gap between the labels. Um, and uh, I wasn't able to replace that sensor prior to this training. Uh, but that isn't a problem with OmniServer data. That's actually a problem with the actual sensor in the printer. So OmniServer and Data Hub are doing exactly what they should be, as you can see. You can see, easy peasy, uh, it's just as easy as that. So I'm act actually, I have a few more items that I want to cover, so I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to my PowerPoint. Now, hopefully that was useful for showing you the types of things that that Omni server can make possible and get connected to your control systems. So the last thing that I want to cover uh, is giving you some insight into the, um, some additional information resources that we have and how to help you get started integrating your own non-standard devices with Omni server. Um, so I'm going to actually share my video again. Okay. So. First, uh, on the OmniServer website, we have a whole section dedicated to support resources. Um, you're going to be able to access uh, application notes, um, videos, protocol samples, um, how-tos, uh, troubleshooting flowchart, things of that nature. Uh, additionally, we have uh, we have a lot of blog posts on OmniServer topics specifically on how to do specific things, how to connect specific client applications, um, and things of that nature, how to use specific features in OmniServer. Uh, we also have a dedicated OmniServer how-tos video page um, that has all sorts of specific videos on client connectivity, how-tos, um, and using things like topic variables. Uh, register numbers, um, error detection codes, uh, things like that in OmniServer as well. So how can Software Toolbox help you get connected to your non-standard devices? Um, several ways. Uh, we do offer a protocol documentation review uh, where you send us a protocol document for a particular device that you'd like to get connected. Um, or if you don't, if you don't have documentation like what I showed you earlier with the barcode scanner uh, or the printer, um, at the very least we would need a, a manufacturer or make and model information, and then we can try to find that sort of documentation if it exists out there. Um, at that point, um, we can review that documentation um, and determine what would be involved uh, with implementing that in OmniServer and getting those devices connected. 
Um, aside from that, uh, for certain simple protocols, um, kind of like that barcode scanner was pretty simple. It was one message and one item. Um, it's sometimes possible for us to provide a basic sample to help you get started that you can use sort of as a template for how to, for how to implement other commands. Um, and uh, or sometimes we'll even maybe have an existing sample available um, if, if it's one that um, that we've helped customers with in the past, depending on the particular device that you're connecting to. Um, aside from that, um, for certain protocols, uh, we do offer um, professional services. Um, and uh, once we've had a look at your protocol and what you need to do um, with that protocol to get connected, um, we can, if it's something where you want us to design the protocol and complete it for you, uh, or if you want us to do um, a, uh, a proof of concept implementation where we implement a handful of, of commands and then you use that as a template to go off and complete the protocol yourself uh, or anything between a full implementation or, or, or a minimalistic one. Um, we, can, we can provide a quote for um, our services to help you get started with that as well. Um, now, aside from that, um, we are doing some additional training um, on various topics uh, over the next few months and into next year, 2021. Uh, here's the calendar for what's coming up the rest of this year um, in case there's some of these topics that you might want to join us for. Um, we, have a, we have a training on integrating industrial and business data sources on September 30th, um, logging OT and OPC data to Azure SQL on October 28th. Uh, adding OPC or U UA or DA server interfaces to your custom software applications. That one's on November 12th. Uh, and then I'll be doing a session on top server troubleshooting techniques uh, before cr the Christmas holidays on December 9th. Uh, you can find out more information on those training sessions um, at the link at the bottom here, info.softwaretoolbox.com slash virtual dash training dash classes. And there are also, uh, you can also register for any or all of those on that page as well. Um, if any of those sound interesting to you. So with that, uh, we'll open up the floor for questions and answers. Um, if you do want to access uh, the trial software for the solutions that I use today uh, in the training, OmniServer and Cogent Data, the links to access that free trial software are on the screen here. Um, if you think of any questions later um, outside of the Q&A here, I have our contact information on the screen here as well. All righty, very good, Kevin. Um, I'm going to, Mark and I have been answering some questions over in Q&A. Okay. I'm going to open a poll for everyone that will sit open here for 15 minutes um, to give you some feedback from the team of folks who joined today. Um, let me do something here. So uh, we did have some questions about, you know, obviously, uh, you know, the scale and the printer, you know, weren't super complex protocols. Sure. And some folks were asking about, you know, more complex things. You know, I shared, like, you know, the printers that Mark did where he was configuring the right. .NET printers and some, some really complex protocols. Um, we had some people asking about, like, HMI message displays, um, batch controllers, et cetera. The answer we gave them was, look, if the protocol manual is available and the documentation is available, we can look at it and, and, and we'll probably be able to talk at it, uh, to it. And as you shared, that's one of the services that you, you know, we, we do for free is a yes. quick evaluation to see can we do it, um, you know, or would somebody have to write a native native driver? Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, absolutely. That right? um, that's the key. That's the key to us being able to integrate those devices using OmniServer is that protocol documentation. Um, we have to be able to know the syntax and the format of those those commands and responses. Uh, if we can get that information, there's a very, very good chance that we're going to be able to get those devices connected um, to wherever you need to get that data using OmniServer. Uh, so that's, that's spot on, uh, absolutely. Um, and in the situation where you want our help uh, with, with setting up those protocols, again, we need that information so that we can give you an accurate idea of what kind of effort is going to be involved with that. Sure, sure. Okay, and um, some folks have asked about the uh, you know what the licensing costs. You know, this is we go into this as a technical training, but we have some folks asked. I think you have a slide on that you can share. Oh, on the pricing, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and share that out. I'll spring both of those up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so you can see here. Um, 
uh, two basic editions, uh, OmniServer's license by edition for basically on your functionality. The OmniServer Professional Edition is a fully uh, is a fully inclusive uh, version. Um, you'll see the, the list price there is in U.S. dollars of 1171. Um, now that includes all the client interfaces that I mentioned. Uh, that's your OPC UA, OPC DA, DDE, and the one-door suite link interfaces. Those are what we call client interfaces. Um, it also includes some some plugins um, or what we called in the past wedges that give you some advanced functionality. Um, there's a file plugin that allows you in built into OmniServer to log data to a text or CSV file. Um, a database plugin that's going to allow you to log internal to OmniServer to any ODBC compliant database. And that's fully configurable, uh, taking uh, data from your devices um, and, and logging those. Uh, there's an email plugin that allows you to set up uh, custom email reports using information that's being communicated with OmniServer and send out email and SMS reports using that, um, as well as a keyboard wedge uh, for sending uh, keystrokes from OmniServer to any Windows application. Uh, based off of the data uh, from your from your OmniServer protocols and devices, um, the OmniServer Server Edition, which is actually our most popular edition um, at uh, US dollars nine hundred nine dollars, um, that includes all of the client interfaces, but not the plugins. Um, so that includes your OPC UA, OPC DA, DDE, and one or Suite Link interfaces uh, without those advanced plugins. Um, um, and uh, the protocol consulting that I was talking about, where we either build the protocol for you or help you get started building the protocol, um, that's an hourly. That's an hourly uh, consulting service. Uh, that's $150 an hour. If that's something you're interested in. Oh, hey, Kevin, these prices these are per, these are perpetual license prices, correct? Yes, absolutely. It's a perpetual license. Um, the support and maintenance uh, for the first year is included, um, and that's the support and maintenance is renewable annually, um, or you can do multi-years if that's something you're interested in as well. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Mm -hmm. hey, Kevin, we had a, had a good question come up here around uh, some sort of mass configuration, and I know you, you, we've run into some of these protocols where we have a million messages that you have to hear. Uh, could you maybe show that uh, that CSV import uh, feature just and how we can we we can mass import some of those uh, those, those messages? Yeah, so we support um, CSV import and export um, at the topic level. Um, we we can do CSV import export there. <laughs> uh, we do CSV import export at the device level, um, and we can also do it at the protocol level. So. Um, Inside a inside a protocol, you can actually we support CSV import and export as well. Um, so, like for the items, we can do import and export for the items list, uh, for topic variables, uh, all of your messages. We can do import export. Um, so that's fully um, that's fully available. And if you do need to do some mass configuration of item lists um, and of, of your messages, uh, those are available. Um, should yeah, I don't know. I can do a um, let me do an export just to show you what that looks like. And that came up on my other screen, so let me drag that over here. So you'll see it basically has all of the different fields uh, for a message available in here, so you can mass edit those and then re-import. Um, what I've found is the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and configure one command and then do an export so that you have that format that you can use as a template to go off of. I've found that to be the easiest way uh, to, to do that mass import and export. So hopefully that answers the question and that's helpful on that front. Yeah, and if that individual wants to talk more, we can certainly uh, you, know, you can have a private call with uh, Kevin or Kevin or Mark and uh, absolutely get into the specifics of uh, what you what you have in mind. I'm happy to do that. Okay, I think we run down. Um, we did have one question, and I, I think we answered this, but I want to share it. It came through chat, so I want to share it with everybody. Somebody's okay. asking, well, what if you have an unsolicited protocol, and it's just throwing stuff at you, and you don't have the manual? There's a way to see what that data stream was. What Mark and I shared was, well, you could set up a dummy um, 
response only message or unsolicited. Absolutely. And then go look at the data using the IO monitor tool. And probably if you got enough samples, yeah, you probably could kind of reverse engineer that unsolicited protocol. Sure. As long as it's an ASCII based protocol and it's not using some binary encoded data. Uh, not saying you can't necessarily reverse engineer it if it's binary encoded, but it's going to be a whole lot harder if it's not ASCII. If it's ASCII, that's typically pretty easy. Um, and honestly, and an easy way to do that is to use the barcode sample that we install with OmniServer because it's unsolicited. Has mm -hmm. a single, it has a single item. Uh, you just connect up. Um, you can either use the OPC test client that installs with OmniServer. Um, it's just a sample OPC DA test client. Um, and uh, connect to the one item that's in there, and then anything that's received, um, it's probably not going to match. It's probably not necessarily going to match what's configured in that protocol, but it is going to open the port and allow OmniServer to receive that information uh, on the port. And you can you can select that particular device, and you can see that data that's coming in, and use that as your basis for configuring a protocol that's actually going to work uh, with that data stream. So that's what I've, that's what I've done in the past is use just use the barcode sample. It, it's an easy way to get started trying to reverse engineer that type of protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, you know, it's it's always best if uh, if we have a uh, if we can get the manual. And you know, sometimes, you know, as the owner of the hardware, if uh, you're with an end user or if you're a system integrator, you got to get your end user to lean on the hardware manufacturer. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes companies just don't want to share anything. And that's really unfortunate in today's world of open standards, sure. open, open communication and sharing. And, you know, I, I'll also say that that's one reason uh, in the protocol review section that I was talking about where I mentioned if you don't have the documentation, share the make and model of the device. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a chance that we'll be able to find the documentation somewhere online. Uh, honestly, we've gotten pretty good at doing that. Um, yeah. Finding those hard to find documents. So if it's out there, we can probably find it. Um, yeah. Like John said, that if it's not available, it's it's not it may not be available because the device manufacturer doesn't want it to be available. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Now you can do the formatting of the data in terms of uh, data type. Okay, right. like yes. if it's coming through as one two three four five, but you want it to go in as one two three point four five. That can be done in the visual protocol editor, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, you okay. can do that. You can do that either through, I didn't define any data types in my protocol or the items fields that were in there. Um, mm -hmm. You can, you can, you can change data types uh, of the items. Um, but we also have built in, we also have built into the protocol editor translations. Um, you can translate one character to another, like if you had, uh, if you had, for instance, um, an A coming in from the device and you wanted it to be displayed to your client as a one or something of that nature, we can do that sort of transformation using translations. Uh, okay. if simply, If it's simply a formatting thing uh, with, with, with data types and how the actual raw data is being interpreted, um, you can actually, um, let me find. Well, I've forgotten about translations, Kevin, so there is more than. Sure. <laughs> This is why you and Mark are here as the expert panelists. Yeah, and you can actually format. You, you can format to, to do bit access within in bytes, that sort of thing. Um, you can change the data type that a field that's coming in is going to be interpreted as. Um, define it to use a translation or not use a translation. Reverse text, reverse bits, reverse nibble. Um, all that, all that sort of additional um, formatting uh, processing within the protocol. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate you showing that.